there are differences between first offense DWI and, and second offense DUI or whatever people call it. And, and in North Carolina, we don't really use that nomenclature. Uh, some states do, and so we have clients say, you know, DWI first, what's my punishment? Or DWI second, what's my punishment? We look at first whether or not the state can prove you guilty beyond a reasonable doubt of driving while impaired. And if they can, this, the court looks at three primary things. First uh, is what we call is grossly aggravating factors. And there are actually nine of them, but I've distilled it down to about four where have you had a prior DWI in seven years? Were you in a wreck? Were there a serious bodily injury? Was there a child in the car under the age of 18 or someone of a disability in the vehicle? And fourth, was your license revoked at this time due to a prior driving while impaired? So if it's a DWI second, as some people call it, meaning you've had a prior DWI, my question is, well, it's not second as much as it is when was the first. And we go from the conviction date of the first one to the offense date of the second one, the present one you're serving. It gets even more complicated if you're both pending at the same time. Um, I think it's fair to say that if you have any of the grossly aggravating factors, that's serious, um, in, including jail time. Um, and the court also takes into consideration aggravating factors, which are different than grossly aggravating factors, both of which have to be proven beyond a reasonable doubt by the state. That's their burden of proof and production. And that may be, there are a bunch of them, there may be that your DWI conviction was outside the seven-year window or um, that you were grossly impaired, which in North Carolina is defined as a .15 or higher BAC, blood alcohol concentration, versus what I... I draw a distinction between BAC and BRAC, just so people understand we're talking about blood tests versus breath, BRAC. If either of them are 0.08 or higher, there are issues. If either of them are 0.15 or higher, there are enhancements to the punishment. And a third factor the courts look at is what we call mitigating factors. And we, the defendant, as defense counsel, have a burden of proof. It's a lower burden of proof. It's uh, by a preponderance of the evidence, more likely than not, are factors in mitigation uh, there so that the court can balance factors in an aggravation versus factors in mitigation. And then there's a separate consideration of grossly aggravating factors. Whew, it can be a bit complicated. It can be a bit confusing. And that's one reason we like to sit down with you and go over the facts of your case, which may be different than well-meaning friends and families experiences in court. Uh, our telephone number is 704-342-4357. Look around at our website. We've got a lot of information. Give us a call. I'd love to sit down with you and answer uh, the questions you have that are unique to your case.